do not let your hearts be troubled. I go to prepare a place for you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The words of today's Gospel are some of the most familiar in all the Gospels. Words of comfort we offer to bereaved families at the committal of a loved one. Apt words for all of us now. At a time when there can be few who, if we're not directly affected by the coronavirus, do not know someone struggling to fight off its effects. Every time we open the Bible, however familiar the passage, we will find something different. Why? Because every time we read the Bible, our interpretation is influenced by the context in which we read. And every time that context is different. As humans, we live in a world where time moves forwards at its own inexorable pace, carrying us along with it, whether we wish it or not. Every reading finds us at a different point in that human timeline. Every reading has something unique to say to us in the context in which it finds us. Nothing new, though. But few of us, I think, could have expected to find ourselves in the context we do today. And yet, through the words spoken by Jesus almost 2,000 years ago, God still speaks to us what we need to hear right now. Let's remind ourselves of the context in which Jesus was speaking. We're already in the upper room on the night in which Jesus was arrested, on the last day before his death. Jesus has this last opportunity to teach his disciples to prepare them for the ordeal that is to come. He has just washed their feet. It may seem a symbolic gesture to us in their day it would have served a much more practical purpose. A purpose we perhaps now understand better in the light of the care and attention we've lately come to give to washing our hands. Jesus has already spoken of Judas's imminent betrayal, of Peter's imminent denial. He is offering words of comfort to men about to face probably the most challenging, the most unsettling time of their lives. Surely those words can bring comfort to us too in the challenging and unsettling times we now face. In my father's house, Jesus tells them, there are many dwelling places. Dwelling place may not be a term that we often use these days to describe the places where we live. But in this time of forced, forced isolation, our homes have become places in which to dwell more than they may ever have been before. But Jesus uses the word dwell again when he talks of the Father who dwells in me. And in these days when our church buildings have had to remain empty and closed for Sunday worship, we are presented with the possibility of gaining a deeper understanding of what it is to dwell in the Father's presence and to know what it is to have God's Spirit dwell within us. Our church buildings, the places where we are want to go to seek God on earth, they may be closed but we can still gain an ongoing sense of God's presence with us for all the time that we remain in our homes. And I suspect too that many of us can feel an affinity with the uncertainty Thomas expresses. We do not know the way any more than any of us knows the way forward in these uncertain times. I love the honesty with which Thomas asks his question here and again after Jesus' resurrection. It's okay 
for us to express a similar honesty in our prayers to Jesus. The answer will be the same. I am the way and the truth and the life. And as we pray for a way forward out of this, let's not forget that it's Christian Aid Week. What, you may ask, can we meaningfully do in terms of Christian aid under COVID lockdown? Well, we are asked to do just this. Pray. Pray for those who are suffering now. But more than that, pray that as we come out of this, when this week will have faded into the past, we do not forget that they are probably suffering still. If our nation was woefully ill prepared to face this, there will be others across the world so much worse. And as we take whatever steps we must to ensure that we are better able to deal with the next pandemic, let's ensure also that that capability is shared with all, all those across the world, and not simply our affluent neighbours. Above all, pray because Jesus assures us, as he does his disciples, I will do whatever you ask in my name. In my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Those words, his gift to the disciples he about, is about to leave, are a gift to us all, for all time. Believe in God. Believe also in Christ. He will ever remain our way, our truth, and our life. Amen.